Hey, Flim's Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Saturday video, being our upgrade commander build video uh, for the tier 10 premium steel ship, the Ragnar. And this is my third steel ship within the game, and I have been very pleased with uh, Ragnar so far. So, we're going to go over the playstyle, um, the type of ship she is, her armor, her upgrades, modifications. Uh, and of course the commander. So uh, what type of destroyer is the Ragnar? Well, the Ragnar is definitely a gunboat destroyer since she does not even have any torpedoes. So you can, uh, you have three types of destroyers. You have your torpedo destroyer, you have a hybrid, and then you have a gunboat destroyer. And the hybrid is usually a mix of both, but because of no torpedoes, she's full-fledged uh, gunboat destroyer. One of the few destroyers in the game like uh, Friesland, uh, and then its other counterpart, and I'm spacing the, another ship, Duid. Uh, these ships don't have torpedoes, uh, just like the Ragnar. So she is a gunboat destroyer, and you play her around her guns. Now, looking at the uh, armor, which I did discuss in yesterday's video, it'll be tagged at the end of this video. It was my, uh, I highlighted uh, some different clips, talked about the ship, the play style. And in that video, uh, we talked about the armor, because it's very strong in being able to understand and playing Ragnar to the strength. Because um, most destroyers you might find, they have the 19 millimeter uh, plating at the higher tier, fully across the ship, than with their 13 millimeter superstructure. But the Ragnar has this 25 millimeter belt. Like this is something you would find on cruisers um, in the game. So that means that a lot of tier 10 destroyers can't punch through uh, your side plating or this little wrap around aft end plating that you get on the rear of the ship, which also helps if you're kind of kiting sailing away. And also that you have the 25 millimeter on the deck as well. So the only damage you're gonna take on the top side of your ship is just uh, your superstructure here. Um, so this makes Ragnar really strong. Like practic most all tier 10 destroyers um, with their HE, they cannot pin. Um, most destroyers, um, you have something like the Daring has 19 millimeter HE penetration, and then like Gary and Yu Yang, I think they're like, uh, maybe they get into 20, but then the Delny and Havarosk, I think are 20, 21 millimeter. Um, it would take something with the destroyer with the IFHE skill, so like uh, Hurugamo will eat a Ragnar up because you have 37 millimeter IFHE. Uh, that's the inertia fuse high explosive skill. And so you'll eat through the Ragnar armor. Um, so you can bounce uh, a lot of stuff uh, when you're uh, angled well, even some cruiser volleys. Uh, destroyers have to fire AP to get through this. And you saw that in yesterday's video when the Club Bear got a good AP salvo on me for almost 5k. Um, so you really you have to angle away when they're firing the AP. Otherwise, a destroyer is forced to try to shoot you in your nose or in this smaller section here, which makes it a lot more difficult for them. So that gives you more time, uh, especially with your health, because you have 30,000 health and, and a repair party consumable, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in just a moment. So let's go and talk about the modules you have on the ship. There's nothing to upgrade, but um, with what we have right now, we have a three second reload time, 180 degree turn time of 8.3 seconds, and these are 152 millimeter guns. So um, most destroyers, you might have something like uh, 120 millimeter. Um, I'm kind of spacing the size of the guns on gearing, and I'm just curious. I want to look. Yeah, 127, so I couldn't remember. Um, so it's not common for destroyers to have these uh, cruiser like caliber guns, which makes uh, Ragnar really strong. So you can see HE shell damage 2200, AP shell damage 3000. Uh, you'll haul with the survivability expert, you're 30,000, and you can see your armor is 13 to 25 millimeter, as I just show, showed you. You only have two turrets, so four guns total. You have 16 AA mounts and one ASW mount. It's on the forward part of the ship, so uh, a little tricky to use. Reminds you of uh, Holland, Friesland. Uh, the range I have built with the commander is that we are playing 15.6 uh, kilometer gun range. Um, because you don't have torpedoes, you know, you're often going to be using your guns a lot, so you need to reach out um, and hit enemy ships. Uh, with the Sierra Mike combat signal uh, mounted, 36.8, uh, and then with it not mounted, 35. 
Uh, so you get a really good speed, so I just tend to always run uh, the serum mic combat signal. And then we'll talk about the emergency engine power, uh, which is a 30% uh, boost. Uh, most might be something like an 8, 16, or 20%, but you get 30% here uh, on the Ragnar. As far as the uh, upgrades that I have, uh, first, we've built into the guns. We've reduced the risk of our main battery becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Main battery survivability, plus 50%. Main battery repair time, negative 20%. Um, you really want to have this because I have had my guns knocked out a few times um, in the battles I've played so far with Ragnar. Um, because when it gets knocked, a gun, one gun gets knocked out, you've lost half your firepower. So I encourage taking this one. Otherwise, you have the Auxiliary Armaments Modification 1, which is for AA, and you don't need Magazine Modification, which reduces your risk of your ship's magazine detonating by negative 70%, because you just take the Juliet Charlie Combat Signal, which completely eliminates risk of your ship's magazine detonating. For the third slot, I've gone for the Radar Build. Um, this is one of the, th well, it seems to be increasing more and more, uh, of Tier 10 Destroyers that, uh, or Tier 9 Tier 10 Destroyers that have Radar. Um, so you have a 7.5 kilometer radar, so I've taken the special upgrade which extends our consumable action time by plus 20%. Uh, so you can see here we have an action time of 36 seconds with our radar. Um, so you actually saw me get full use of that in yesterday's video against the enemy Genon. Um, it was in a smoke and a Bravo capture point. Um, so this radar is really strong, especially if you're chasing down a destroyer who's popped a smoke and he's trying to run away from you. Um, he's going to have a hard time doing that because of your radar in your engine boost. Um, so I've built for radar. Um, that's what I've done here. If you don't have the call uh, to pick up the surveillance radar, then I'd tell you go for engine room protection because it's likely that your engine or your steering gears will get incapacitated from time to time. Um, you could also go for the engine boost, which would uh, increase your action time by 30%. Uh, so right now we have uh, 60 seconds, so one minute, um, on our emergency engine power. So we can get that um, lasting longer than just the minute. Um, trying to do math in my head, 18 seconds uh, you could add, so then you'd be 76 seconds, 78 seconds, sorry. Uh, if I've done math correctly in my head, I'm a bit jet lagged still. Um, and that would help. Uh, I found times I wouldn't mind having the engine boost, but I just like building the ship around radar, especially if you're going to be using it for clan battles and competitive, even kind of like ranked. Um, so this is what I would for, first and foremost recommend, then the engine boost, then engine uh, room protection. Uh, thirdly, I've gone for the aiming systems modification one. This reduces our main battery shell dispersion by negative 7%, so we're getting even tighter groups. Uh, one of the things that's really punishing about Ragnar is if you have poor aim, the ship is not for you uh, because the uh, accuracy in dispersion of these shells is so good. Like, you have to really pay attention to when you're aiming. So I decided that I wanted to buff that even further. Um, and that's really the only buff you're getting out of this because you don't have torpedoes or secondaries. Otherwise, you could take the main battery modification too to increase your main battery traverse speed by plus 15%. I mean, it's 8.3 seconds now, which I mean, yeah, there's a lot of shores that have a faster turning radius, but um, it doesn't bother me. You also have a gun modification, which uh, your priority A sector preparation time is reduced by negative 20%. Um, when you have battles where you don't always have carriers, you're not going to get any use from the third slot if you have the skill mounted. So I've just gone for the aiming systems modification because you're always going to be firing your guns. For the fourth slot, I recommend going for propulsion modification one. Uh, time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 50%. Um, I discussed um, the rudder shift time is 5.6 seconds and you have a large turning circle radius for a destroyer. Um, so you're not like daring or even hauling to an extent. Uh, especially daring where you can e easily juke um, while with the rudder shift time because it's so fast um, and you can't take propulsion modification on the British destroyers anyhow because you have the propulsion modification already built in so then you do take steering gears for them um, but the propulsion here helps you when you especially when you have the engine boost running um, which you would have seen in yesterday's video if you haven't watched uh, if you have watched it if you haven't I encourage you to 
where we were dodging CV, uh, midway dropping us, a Yamato firing at us, a Colbert firing at us. Um, and so that was like a half million potential damage in like less than a minute, I think it was. Um, so this is very helpful because you're just, you aren't gonna be dodging things very well with your uh, rudder shift. It minimizes how much damage you take, but you completely avoid uh, damage um, by just simply juking the shell. So I recommend taking the propulsion modification one. Then if it's really not your cup of tea, then steering gears modification one as the second option. For fifth slot, we've gone for concealment. Um, our concealment now is 7.5 kilometer, which is the same as our radar distance. So this is really strong for the uh, competitive build uh, that I'd say that Ragnar is. I've even played Ragnar in clan battles and had good success with it so far. Um, and so this reduces your ship's detectability range by negative 10%, your squadron detectability range, negative 10%, and you have a rather large detectability range by air. You can see it's 3.8 kilometers because you are a large, really large destroyer um, beginning to encompass a light cruiser. And then dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship plus 5%. So um, Ragnar is a ship in which you play and you're gonna get fired at a lot. So um, to me, this is just all around really good to have here uh, with Ragnar. Um, yeah, so definitely take this skill or upgrade. For the sixth slot, I've gone for the reload time. So main battery reload time is negative 12%. So that's the three seconds that you see represented here. Um, your main battery traverse speed is negative 13%. So then of course we're getting a longer 180 degree turn time with our turrets. Um, but this is what you really need, especially when you're getting in those close quarter engagements with enemy destroyers um, and going for that because you're not always gonna be playing at range, right? Um, so then that's why I don't feel the need for the gunfire control system um, because I really value that quicker reload time on these guns. There's not only four guns, so four guns reloading um, three seconds. Um, so getting that DPM uh, buff, in my opinion, is very helpful. Versus taking the gun fire control system modification too. Um, and I'll show you with the commander uh, that I take the range option there. Otherwise, you have auxiliary armaments modification too. Um, you mainly would take this just for the AA because you have a really good AA rating in Ragnar. Um, we can see right here 94, and that's uh, with that. If I take that off, uh, it drops down to 93. Uh, so AA is really good uh, on the Ragnar. Um, you can see, yeah, continuous damage 451, damage by shell explosions 2198. Um, so it is really good. Um, in comparison to the Holland, if you're just wondering, I'll bring my commander back on. Uh, you can see, uh, even with Jersey Swirsky on uh, for the moment, um, it's actually not a strong AA uh, when you compare it to the Holland. Uh, right now it's 87 uh, versus Ragnar's 94. With the build that I have on the Holland so far. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the consumables. So you have your standard uh, damage control party for destroyer action time, five seconds, reload time, 38 seconds with an unlimited number of them. Uh, you really, really, really want to build into your consumables on the ship and I'll illustrate that with the commander. Um, otherwise stock, you're only gonna get two uh, repair parties, two radars, uh, two engine boost. If I take the India Delta combat signal off, you can see HP per second is 300. If I add it on, it's 360. So um, this alone uh, helped save me uh, just that additional heal, uh, healing potential you can get um, in yesterday's clip where you saw that I got down to 44 HP. So I always run the India Deltas on my destroyers that I have the repair party because I picked up several dreadnoughts already with Ragnar. Um, so you want to mount that. Um, your action time for it is 14 seconds, reload time 76 seconds and three consumables. Radar, uh, you have detection of ships 7.5 kilometers, um, action time 36 seconds, reload time 114 seconds, um, number of consumables three. I think if they had started off with a stock, three of each of these, and then you built Super Ten on it, probably make the Ragnar a little too strong. So you have to manage your consumables wisely. 
Otherwise, you have the emergency engine power, and this is the rare, um, the plus 30% that you don't get on many ships in the game. Uh, so it's really fun, uh, you know, to watch your speed go from this 36.8 knots, um, pushing beyond 45 knots. Um, I think, yeah, it's over 45. I don't remember how high up, 46, maybe 47? I don't remember. Um, so this helps you close the distance, especially when you have a destroyer trying to run away from you. They're most destroyers are simply just not going to be able to run away from you um, when you have the upper hand here and having the emergency engine power. But it has a short action time, 60 seconds, so um, <coughs> you just have to be mindful of using it. As far as combat signals I run, you can see it right here. If I had more ND x-rays, I would also take that, and this would be uh, my full setup here. Going to the commander now, uh, first I'm going to recommend you to run the uh, 10 point bread and butter build um, of 95% destroyers in the game, uh, which is the first point to prevent maintenance. Uh, this reduces the risk of your main turrets, steering gears, and engine becoming incapacitated by negative 30%. Uh, you really, really want that. For a three point commander, next you want to pick up a last stand. Uh, ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering gears uh, incapacitated. Because you're a gunboat destroyer, uh, as I said, you are going to have a lot of ships shooting at you, especially when you're opening up. So when your steering gear or your engine gear um, or engine gets knocked out, uh, you really want to be able to continue to be somewhat um, mobile. Um, so definitely pick this up. Then for a six point uh, commander, pick up survivability expert. HP increases for each ship tier plus 350. So that gets us to that nice whopping 30,000 uh, hit point pull. Um, when you tie this with the repair parties, uh, I showed this in the clips yesterday. I had two battles. One was I damage received was 41,000, still alive. Other one was I received over 43,000 damage, now still alive. So those are the two dreadnought matches um, I had. Um, so you really want to build into the survivability of Ragnar. <clears throat> There's a 10-point commander. I'm going to recommend you pick up the concealment expert so you uh, get down to that 7.5 kilometer um, in addition to the 5th uh, upgrade slot concealment um, because uh, this ship really works well in the competitive, uh, really works well in clan battles um, and ranked, um, but particularly when you're fighting around capture point zones, which is what I kind of see more of the role of this ship as. Um, and you can see that I have this ship, <clears throat> this commander, he's trained for Friesland. Um, and I've had to invest um, a lot of uh, elite commander XP into this guy. Um, because for Ragnar, it, to me, and I was talking with someone else about it, I don't remember who, uh, that this ship just requires a high point captain to get the most of your money out of. Um, because uh, here we're only 10 points, and then for a 13 point commander, um, I recommend then picking up the superintendent skill to give you yet those three repair parties, three radars, and three uh, emergency engine power bowl, uh, emergency power consumables. Let's combine those two words, pardon me. Uh, and then after this, it's a 17 point build <clears throat> to pick up the main battery in AA expert. Um, so Holland commander, I don't, I don't run the main battery in AA experts. That's one reason why the AA rating is, uh, when I'm comparing the two ships, uh, are just higher on Ragnar uh, versus Holland, um, because I wanted to, uh, you want to extend the main battery range um, here. Uh, it goes by plus 20%. So then you can see that the 15.6 kilometers we're getting, but our damage from AA shell explosions that plus 15%. So that's why we're pushing over almost 2,200. Uh, alone uh, with the damage by shell explosion. So this is just really beneficial and really helpful um, in my opinion with the Ragnar. And then uh, for that leaves us four points left once you are to a 21 point commander. Um, and so what would I be running next? Well, I'm planning to run Fearless Brawler. Um, so this is going to have the permanent effect of number of shell explosions in AA salvos plus one. So our AA rating goes up to 95. Um, so we're getting, was it just it's two now, then it goes up to three. Um, so more flak, um, which is helpful. And then you have the uh, can be activated, uh, which is the reduces the main battery reload time while your ship remains detected by an enemy. 
uh, main battery reload time, negative 10%. So this means your three second reload time is gonna go down to 2.7 seconds because we're just shaving off 10% of three seconds, which is 0 0.3 seconds, so 2.7 seconds. Um, and a lot of times when you're playing the Ragnar, I mean, you don't have smoke, right? Unless you're using an allied smoke screen. Um, maybe you're using islands sometimes. Um, but you're going to be out in the open a lot. So this increases your damage per minute, your DPM. Um, and that makes you really uh, more of that brawler gunboat DD build. Uh, most all of your gunboat destroyers run, uh, you run Fearless Brawler on. Just because it's a really good skill. Um, and it helps you to inflict more damage in a quicker matter of time on the, the, to an enemy destroyer as an example than what they're able to do to you. Um, so that really hogs up, um, just to get to that point, uh, that really hogs up a 21 point commander. I mean, we've not even been able to build into Adrenaline Rush, um, which I typically always run, uh, nor the main battery in AA Specialist, which also helps get our uh, main battery reload time down. Um, so if I were to illustrate that, gets you down 2.8 seconds. Um, and then if you did not take the main battery in a expert, um, you'd be giving, uh, sacrificing your range, um, but then you run the fearless brawler, uh, then your uh, reload time would be closer to uh, 2.6 seconds or technically 2.52 seconds. Um, and that's still if you're keeping the reload modification in the six slot uh, on your upgrades. And then if you wanted it even faster, you would have to give up Superintendent and take the Adrenaline Rush. So then your reload time as you lose health would be 2.4, 2.3, 2.2 seconds. But um, you're giving up range and you're giving up uh, Superintendent to be able to do a full on um, reload build, if you will. Um, now, you could give up the concealment, and then you still have your range, um, but your, uh, let's see, that would be your range, or your concealment, excuse me, would be over 8 kilometers, so something like, uh, what is it, would be 8.3, 8.4, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, so then you can't um, instantly detect an enemy ship spotting you with radar because you have a roughly 1 kilometer uh, gap uh, where your radar doesn't cover your full concealment. Um, if I was playing this ship only for randoms, uh, then I could see probably giving up the concealment experts and going for the fearless, uh, or fearless brawler, or adrenaline rush, um, doing more of this um, type of build, um, and maybe even giving up the superintendent. But that's just if you're really giving up to that. But if you're going to be playing the ship for clan battles, um, to me. Um, this is the build that you want to be running on the Ragnar. Um, so again, she does take a lot of points in a specifically trained commander. Like, I won't even run Jersey Swirsky, um, because I have him built for, um, torpedoes, right? And if I take the main battery AA specialist, then my A defense jumps up to 90. Uh, which is, I think that's my plan to do here on the ship, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong. Um, so... She just takes a lot, but Ragnar is a really good ship. And uh, once you begin to get, um, I mean, to me, really at this point, 17 point commander uh, helps so much more than just if you were only at a 13 point commander. So if you want to get Ragnar, um, you know, use those really good uh, economic bonuses, which I only have so many of. <laughs> uh, the 800%, or you could even be running the 1600%, which you tend to not have very many of those. Um, and I'm trying to use this more on building up other commanders um, to be able to uh, get to that 21 point commander that much quicker. So I think that's going to wrap up my upgrade commander build video of the Ragnar in less than 25 minutes. So that's great. So if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know what you're running in the comments. If you have a question about a um, skill that I didn't discuss, let me know in the comments. Uh, so if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.